In the name of Jesus, God, I exalt you. I ask for mercy upon my heart today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You all welcome to the School of the Spirit. Uh, today is my first School of the Spirit in the year. Last week was uh, Pastor Thompson who was around because I had to travel. So I'm greeting everybody. Happy New Year and welcome to the School of the Spirit. I pray that this year the Lord is going to show great mercy. I know mercy is available for us this year. God is going to show us great mercy. There's going to be great workings in our hearts in a great measure this year because of what the Lord has promised to do. The Lord has promised to give us everlasting life. He said he wants to give us everlasting life. And uh, if he has said so, he's going to help us to cooperate with him to get the life. Because as much as God is willing, we also have to be willing to cooperate because everlasting life is not just going to be poured on us. It needs our cooperation. It needs our will to reject what we need to reject and take what we need to take. God is going to give us so much grace this year so that we will, we will cooperate with God. We will align with his laws in the name of Jesus. I, I, I woke up this morning with this song in my, in, my, in my heart. I was just singing it, you know. You know, there are times that um, a song comes to you, you know, that is just a message. Praise the Lord. So I, I, I woke up with this song this morning, that um, Larry song. You, you can measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. Can you help us? Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. For you can measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. I want to live your life. Measure out to me your commandments of everlasting life. Measure out to me. You can measure out to me your commandments of everlasting life. I want to live your life. Measure out to me. Your commandments of everlasting life. Take me to that place. Take me to that place where I don't have a say. That place where I despise the shame and then do the cross and then I overcame. Oh, measure out to me, you can measure out to me. You'll come. I go about my business, measure out to me your commandments of everlasting. Your commandments are not burdensome, oh, you can measure out to me your commandments of everlasting. I want to live your life, your commandments. Of everlasting life. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Such shall be our song. Oh. The whole of this year. Oh. Our hearts will delight. 
delight in your commandments. Our light we did our heart delight in your laws. From your commandments are life everlasting. You will quicken us by your commandments. You will show us your commandments. You will show us your commandments. You will measure your commandment to us. And we shall receive grace to do it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is saying there is no everlasting life without the commandments of everlasting life. Hallelujah. So it's going to be our prayer. We are going to pray and trust God so much that commandments of everlasting life will come. And one thing about it is that His commandments are not grievous. Because the time commandments of everlasting life is coming, it's not coming to a people who have not been used to commandments in a measure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not going to be grievous to us. Praise the Lord. Because we have used Christ to a measure and that we have overcome the world. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have overcome the world by the use of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate everybody, everyone who participated in the School of the Spirit last year. I want to greet all of you and congratulate you and thank you so much for being part of the School of the Spirit the whole of last year. The Lord will increase you this year. He will measure unto you His commandments this year. It's a great blessing for the commandment of God to come to a people. <laughs> it's, a, it's mercy because it's bringing us out of darkness. So this year, a lot of commandments will be measured unto us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to start by appreciating our daddy who is in the UK who labored tirelessly on this pulpit last year. He labored tirelessly. He labored as if he's no longer in the flesh. <laughs> as if he has been translated. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to appreciate him. We love him so much. All of us, don't we love him? We, we love him. He's our daddy. He's our, 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 how do we call it? Our prophet. Because he's always showing us the way. He's always pointing the way. This is the way. Walk in it and everybody will just align. The Lord will give us grace to align more this year. In the name of Jesus. We want to appreciate you, sweetheart. Uh, we thank you. We thank God for your life. We thank God for what God is using you to do in our lives. We cannot, we cannot um, forget, and we will not forget how God hijacked you to make you a blessing to us. We appreciate it. And the only thing we will give to you is appreciation by aligning with God. We will align with God. We will use that to appreciate you because we will align with God. We thank you so much. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will measure more grace unto you this year in the name of Jesus. You will do his will. You will finish it. He will strengthen you to do his will in the name of Jesus. Though you are in the UK, we know that your heart is with us. Necessity is laid on you to be with the UK brethren and it's been a great blessing to the brethren there. It's been a great blessing. So we, 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 we prefer them in love, knowing that uh, we are counting down to your return also. <laughs> Not because we don't love them, but uh, we are counting down. <laughs> Waiting to see you in our midst very soon. We appreciate you so much. God bless you, sir. Amen. I, I want to also uh, appreciate Pastor Emeka and Pastor Lillian. Uh, we thank God for their lives. Thank God for what God used them to do in this, in this community the whole of last year. The Lord will strengthen you the more. The Lord will give you grace to do his will and to finish it in the name of Jesus. We love and appreciate you, Pastor and Pastor Lillian, the Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless the work of your hands, strengthen you for greater works this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. I also want to thank uh, Pastor Thompson 
Ehima and Pastor Dukpe Ehima. Thank you so much for your contribution to the community. Thank you for laboring tirelessly to be a blessing to this house. The Lord will strengthen you this more this year, strengthen you more this year. He will, he will uphold your hand and he will bless the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. I also want to thank Pastor Tayo, Fasson, and, Pastor, and uh, Sister Meg. Thank you so much for your labor in the house. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for encouraging the man of God. Thank you so much. The Lord bless and increase you in the name of Jesus. Pastor Moses, thank you. House and uh, Biodun, thank you for supporting Pastor Moses. Because without supporting him, he cannot do what he's doing freely. So we also appreciate um, Sister Biodun for her support and her love for Pastor Moses. Thank you, Pastor Moses, for your labor in the house. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you with himself. He will give you grace for more service this year in the name of Jesus. I also want to appreciate Pastor Ken in absentia. Thank you for your love, for your support, for the strength and encouragement you give to the house. The Lord will increase you mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, all the... I hope I'm not forgetting all our pastors here. Pastor Tope, Pastor, Pastor Ayo, Pastor TJ, Pastor Iola, Pastor Laide, Pastor Kolade, Pastor Michael Luwale, Pastor Michael Gmoye, Pastor Sessi, Pastor, Pastor Pileke, Pastor, who else is absent? All the Gadite pastors, God bless you. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for your labor. Thank you for your love. The Lord will increase you. You will receive the reward of the blessing for your labor in the name of Jesus. The Lord will quicken your pace unto life everlasting in the name of Jesus. We are all laboring for one purpose, to inherit everlasting life. That should never leave our focus. That the reason for our labor is because we want to inherit everlasting life. Whether you are sweeping, you will sweep so that you can inherit everlasting life. You will sweep with purpose of heart. Praise the Lord. Because the, the reason you are not laboring, I mean, most of us are not being paid, you know, for, for laboring. But the reward, even if you are being paid, what you are being paid cannot be compared to the labor you give. To the service you give so the the reward really is everlasting life the reward is eternal life we will we will we will, we will labor this year with that understanding so that we can get the reward for our labor we will not labor in vain in the name of jesus and the lord will reward us mightily in jesus name amen who else uh, ah, see, Pastor Clay, sorry. <laughs> Let me clap for Pastor Clay. And all our elders, Pastor Clay's sister is in the house. She was so faithful last year. I can see Sister Omoze there, very faithful and committed to School of the Spirit. The Lord will reward you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I pray that be. Okay. Um, you know, in, in the... We, we have um, a promise by God that he wants to give to us everlasting life. And you know God does not lie. The Bible says God who cannot lie. He does not lie which means he's very serious about what he said and what he wants to do. And we are so privileged that he has made us even to come into, into the knowledge of what he wants to do so that we can be quick to cooperate with him in whatever he wants to give to us. Everlasting life, we have been talking about everlasting life for, for a while now, and then we, we were all wondering why God came so strongly and said, I want to give you everlasting life which means he's telling us that this thing we are talking about is real and that he's he's bent on making it real in our lives 
you know you, you can hear a message and hear a message and it will not be tangible to you it will not be real but god is saying to us he wants to make it real in us he wants to make it real and the way god will make it real to us is to bring us the commandments of that life everlasting life is real amen everlasting life is the life of god the life of god the life of god the life of the most holy the life of the most holy hallelujah and god before the world began determined that he will give to man everlasting life man was originally made for everlasting life everlasting life is not an afterthought after man fell not at all it was not after man fell that god now said ah the remedy to their fall is everlasting life let's make provisions let's try start uh, making uh, preparations to give them everlasting no before man was made the thought of man in the heart of god from the beginning before he was image after our likeness our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them have dominion let them have dominion because it takes image and likeness to have dominion dominion is as a result of image and likeness dominion cannot be in place if image and likeness is not in place dominion is not what you pray for it's not what you pray for lord give us dominion give us dominion over this territory give us dominion over this place give us dominion over this city give us dominion over this situation no it's not what you pray for you know we have heard of dominion conferences that people measure seven steps to dominion no dominion is not like that dominion is as a result of image and likeness dominions is a product of stature. Dominion oozes out from stature. Dominion oozes out from image. And likeness. So in the beginning... The original intention of God for man is that man should be a dominion being. Hallelujah. That man should be a dominion being. Ah, a dominion being. And even after man fell, after man fell, to let you know that God does not go back on his intentions. After man fell and fell and fell again and eventually became flesh, when Jesus came, that thought was still in God. The reason God sent Jesus to come and die is because of dominion. Hallelujah. Abby, is it not because of dominion? Eh? into the kingdom of God which is the dominion of God or the life of God so you can you can quote that scripture this way verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the life of God am I lying eh? because dominion is life life is dominion praise the lord praise the lord so god's original intention 
for man is a man should have everlasting life. Man should be an eternal being. Eternal being. So he created Adam and started him with the list of the stature that a man should have, which is the living soul. Living soul. He said, and the Lord, for, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That breath of life that he gave to him was responsible for the kind of life that Adam carried. And man became a living soul. A living soul. When you say somebody is living, it means that the man has, has everlasting life. Is living that is he has a life the state Adam was created was a kind of everlasting life that is not according to the one that God himself has but God breathed into him the breath of life the breath of life and Adam became a living soul he became a living soul Yes, give me the next verse. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Yes. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is planted pleasant sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil after god made the man a living soul he planted a garden and out of the ground the lord god caused to grow all manner of trees pleasant Pleasant to, to sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Why did God need to plant the tree of life in the midst of the garden? And he told the man, you can eat of this tree. But this one, you should not eat of it. Because the tree of life... The tree of life was essential for the making of the kind of man that Adam was supposed to be. The tree of life was essential to bring Adam to the fullness of God's intention for man. In that tree of life contained the very essence of God that is needful for man. To be complete. To be God's man. God's dream man. Hallelujah. The tree of life contained the life of God. Which is everlasting life and eternal life. Hallelujah. Because in the book of Revelation, we could see before the throne. To know that that tree is a tree of the stature of God's image. It was found at the end of the day before, let's, let's quickly look at it. Revelation 20, 22. Give me from verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The water of life, proceeding out of the throne of God 
and of the Lamb. Yes. In the midst of the street of it, of the water that is coming from the throne, you know that anything that has to do with the throne has to do with the nature, the life of God, the very essence of God. Anything that is not compatible with God cannot be close to the throne at all. Hallelujah. In the midst of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. You see that tree of life appearing, appearing in the midst of the trees, of the streets, of the water that was coming from the throne. Hallelujah. The tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Praise the Lord. So this same tree of life was what God planted in Eden. This tree of life that was before that was before the throne, it was growing from the waters that was issuing from the throne. Hallelujah. So it's a tronic tree because it contains it carries the essence of God. It's the, it's, the, it's the tree of the image of God. Anything that does not have the image of God cannot get close to the throne. So God made, he, he caused the tree of life, planted the tree of life in the garden and told the man, eat it so that you can become tronic. You can become an entity of the throne. Because what is contained in that tree has the ability to grow a man and make a man fit for the throne. So Adam was meant to improve from the stature he was made with. He was meant to improve because he was not yet the dream of, of God for a man. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. That image of a living soul had dominion to some extent. Because of that image, there was dominion to some extent. Psalm 8 gives us that. And the Lord God let's... Okay. Psalm 8. Yes. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. You made him a little lower than the angels. And has crowned him with glory and honor. That stature that he had, had his own level of glory and honor. The glory and honor that was upon Adam when he was created, is the glory and honor that was lower than the angels. Praise the Lord. And what was response? Yes, give me continue. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Because of the kind of life, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. A particular kind of life, which is not the original life of God. Because what I'm seeing from this scenario of Adam is that the life of God cannot just be gotten cheaply. The life of God cannot be gotten with your, without your, your, your obedience, without your cooperation. Why didn't God just breathe into the nostrils of Adam and then he will become a living, a quickening spirit? <laughs> Did you get that? Why didn't he just breathe into his nostrils and man became a quickening spirit? You understand? No. He started him with living soul and then gave him commandments to come up. He started him, you're welcome, ma. You're welcome. God bless you, ma. He started him with the living soul life. That one is given freely. Freely you have received. <laughs> Give it. He, had no, he had no say in that. 
he had no nothing to cooperate with. Hallelujah. He had no commandment to obey, to become a, 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 a living soul. He breathed into his nose, it was God's decision. But to come to the very essence of God, the life of God, your own decision is involved. Your own cooperation is involved. Your own obedience is involved. You must make up your mind that I want this life. And when I want it, if I want it, when I make up my mind I want it, there are laws that govern the life which I must make up my mind I am going to obey. So instead of Adam going for the ultimate life by obeying obedience to God's commandment, he dropped from the original life that he, they gave him. He was supposed to partake of this life. He was supposed to partake of the tree of life. And then he will go up. And I'm sure it's not just one day that he takes the tree of life, the fruit of the tree of life, that he will just automatically become become uh, in the image and the likeness of God that you participate automatically partake of the life of God the life all the life that is in the tree I think he's supposed to take a, a span of time that every fruit he takes has some demands for him to cooperate with for him to gradually come up to the life of God hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you see the same pattern occurred to us when Jesus came. Adam went down and down and down. His, his seed went down and down and down until man became flesh. He died in his spirit. Hallelujah. Now, after that, when Jesus Christ came, God started repeating the same pattern. When you, you just believed in the Lord Jesus, you became quickened in your spirit. You became what? Quickened in your spirit. In fact, your spirit became Christ. Your spirit became Christ. God could not, at the new birth, make you Christ in your soul. He could not, at the new birth, automatically give you everlasting life and give you eternal life. Eternal life is dependent on your willingness to journey further into God by obedience, by commandment. Just like they gave, they made Adam a living soul from the start. And they now gave him commandment. You can come up, you can improve from this living soul stature and come to the everlasting life of God and come to eternal life but it has to do with obedience to commandment when you obey commandments you will live that is you'll be quickened I, I, I believe Adam was meant to be quickened over a period of time by partaking of the, the, the fruit of the tree of life And I think I, I remembered one uh, ministration Pastor Tokwe made that there were many, many trees in the garden. And before Adam got to the tree of life, he was meant to have partaken of some other trees that would qualify him and make him to be able to partake of the tree of life. It's just the same setting in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I must confess. That day that I said that he ministered, I told Pastor, I said, ah, ah, did you see that ministration Pastor talked about me? I said, I've never seen it that way. You know what my husband said? He said, me too. I've never seen it that way. So, so ah, okay. <laughs> so, Pastor Tokpe said that he too is not the originator of the revelation. That he heard it from Pastor Busui. <laughs> uh, you know, it is good to be meek and humble. That you don't know everything. That's why we listen to one another. And we appreciate the part that each person has to supply. 
I don't have everything. I don't have all the revelation. But there, there is a part that God gives to me and I supply it. And when you listen to it, as you are listening, God will be showing you some other parts that I am not seeing. That you also will come and add to it. So you understand? Not that you come and tear my own, that uh, this one. It, no, 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 no. You build on it. That is how the community should operate. Praise the Lord. Pastor, you're welcome, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, mommy. You're welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every, every uh, joint, Abby, every part has something to supply. Everybody has something to supply. Praise the Lord. The way Pastor Thompson ministers, I me, mean, I don't know. One day he was preaching and he was talking. You remember that day? He was talking about uh, Daniel and uh, the, the horn, the goat with a uh, little horn. And, that's it. and he now said, they will not be able to finish this. And when mommy comes, he, mommy will come and, uh, uh, he will come and, no, no, no. He will come and throw light on it. And I laughed. I got up. I said, Pastor Thompson, he wants me to speak heresy. <laughs> That is not my area. <laughs> it's not my area at all. If I decide to preach on that, I will just speak heresy. God forbid that this is my mouth will speak heresy. <laughs> it's better to preach milk and preach it accurately than go and take something that you don't know anything about. Uh, you see, when I read uh, uh, Revelation 22, throne, tree, this one, it's not my area. I just pick what I want to pick and run away from there and leave it to the man of God to come and... And I'm not ashamed to say I don't know it. I will be in trouble if I don't know something and I begin to throw light on it because I want to show that I have revelation. I will have a problem. I don't want evil spirit to land on this head. I'm very careful about what lands on this head. This head, it must never carry evil spirits. Never. And one of the ways you guard yourself from spirits is to be humble. Become little. Don't try to show to be something you are not. Don't try to show to be something you are not. You understand what I'm saying? If you don't know something, say, I don't know it. The one you know, just say it and leave. Those who know better, as I'm preaching, they will be hearing they will be seeing things as I'm preaching. And then when they have opportunity to preach, they will supply that one. The Bible says if somebody is professor and something is revealed to the other. You understand? So that is to make a healthy community. Let's have that attitude of heart. It will make us healthy. Because what we are looking for, we are not looking from, for honor from men. We are looking to please God. Praise the Lord. We are looking to please God to be, to be vessels in the hand of God. So any level that God has given you, stay there and preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So me, I'm not ashamed to say I don't know something. I, I never. Never. about building, 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 building. The my, my, I'm the one building. I am the one who's building. I am the one who is the builder. I am the one who is the supplier even of mine resources. Even mine resources. I am the one who chooses even in my wisdom. Even in the wisdom wherewith I grant grace. Even the wisdom wherewith I measure out grace and authority. Even the wisdom wherewith I call. Even the wisdom where 
which I set in order, even in that wisdom. I am the one who gives inspiration. I am the one who blesses ministries and ministers, even with understanding. I am the one who serves pasture. I am the one who gives meals. I am the one who causes one minister to see in this light and another minister to see the same matter, even from another wisdom. It is all me who is the head, who is the master builder, who shows from each minister to each minister. Therefore, I say, stay within the boundary of the grace that I give, even the grace that I have measured out, even within the boundary of the authority that I have caused each minister and ministry to find. For the grace that you found is what you easily relate with, is what you easily understand, is what you easily say, is what easily blesses people, even in your mouth. For when you step outside of your grace, you won't bless people, you won't build people, you won't edify people, and that which I am supplying through you will not show in its purest form. And the other builders who struggle to build upon that which I am bringing through you, and you will not build upon that which I bring through others who stand in their lot. Their voices stay in your grace. Stay in my ability through you. Stay within the expression of utterance that I give because I am the builder. It is me who builds. I am the one who is building. I am not only building in your community. I am building across the body of Christ. I am building some even in a little measure. I am building some even at another measure. And I am building greatly even in your midst. But I want to build all to attain even into my present estate. Allow for my building and stay even within the flow of grace that I measure out per time because I am the one who judges I am the one who estimates whether you are building according to what I am also building per time mm. hallelujah that is very very clear isn't it very clear so this will make us humble when you know that God is the one who builds God is the one who gives inspiration Say, what have you received? What have you that you have not received? So if I have not received revelation on the goat, the goat with uh, <laughs> two horns, and Pastor Thompson is trying to coerce me to come and be saying it, and me too, I get up and begin to talk about the goat with two horns. <laughs> what is that? Is it the goat with, the, is it the rough goat or which, what was that your ministration that day? But he's very good in that Old Testament. Is his, that's his region. Sure you understand? So you now said that you can't. No, I don't know that word. I just laughed. I said, you, you can't get me to talk heresy. <laughs> I, learned, I learned that a long time ago. I didn't get born again yesterday. You can't. I didn't get born again yesterday. Ah, hmm, heresy. Learn where. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what was I saying before this, uh, this thing? I said that um, man fell and fell and fell and fell and became flesh. But that does not negate God's intention. It didn't stop God's intention. So I said something that when we got born again, just like when Adam was made, Adam was made a living soul. And that was the best God could give freely. When we got born again, we got quickened in our spirit. And that was the best God could do freely. You didn't obey anything to get born again. Just as Adam did not do anything to be made a living soul. The rest of the journey now depends on how you can obey commandments to appreciate. Adam was given a commandment. Eat of the tree of life. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you will appreciate. If you eat this one, you will depreciate. You will, in fact, you will die. And he did that. So our, our um, cooperation is needed for the rest of the journey. 
our obedience is needed for the rest of the journey. So for when we got born again, we were quickened in our spirits. We became Christ in our spirit. But we needed to become Christ in our soul. Like Paul was writing to the Galatian church. You know, people, were, people who talk that uh, once you are born again, you are everything, you are everything. No, 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 no. Paul wouldn't have been writing to the Galatian church that my little children in whom I travel again in birth until Christ be formed in you. He was writing to believers that Christ needed to be formed in them. So what did they get when they got born again? If Christ needs to be formed in them. Christ, he said, until Christ said, my little children of whom I travel in birth. Let's read the scriptures before. Because some people went to introduce things to them that will disrupt the formation of Christ in them. And uh, Paul was, was uh, fighting them. Give me. The zealous who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Uh -huh. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? This is the crux of the matter. For Christ to be formed, he had to evidently lay Christ before them. He had to evidently lay Christ before them. He said, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. That was the job that Paul did to the Corinthian Christians. After they got born again, he had to evidently set forth Jesus Christ. How do you evidently set forth? You preach Christ. You preach the truth that is in Christ. That is the work that is to be done. After they have been weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. The journey continues by preaching, teaching, revelations of Christ. Because you need to deposit the truth that made up Christ to them. There are substances that made up Christ. You will not be setting Jesus Christ forth before a people if the revelation of Jesus of Christ is not being preached to them. They must see what made up Christ? What fabricated Christ? And then they will obey. They must obey. The journey forward is that you must obey. You must obey the revelation that is being preached, brought to you. Hallelujah. So he said, oh foolish Galatians. Because he had preached Christ to them. Some other people came and started preaching, you know, um, uh, Judaism to them works that are not works that are generated from the revelation of Christ works of religion when Christ is preached there are works to be done but those works are generated from the preaching the revelation of Christ whatever is revealed concerning Christ is to be obeyed is to be done those truths of Christ are to be obeyed for them to journey further. Praise the Lord. So give me the next one. This only will I learn of you. Receive thee the spirit by the works of the law, which was what they were telling them, or by the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. Yes. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect? By the flesh. So go to that. Uh, go back to that uh, chapter 4. <clears throat> My little children. Of whom I travel in birth. Again. Until Christ. Be formed. 
in you. Christ needed to be formed in them. That is the next level of appreciation and acquisition of life for them. Formation of Christ. But this does not come like the new birth came. Just like the next level of appreciation for Adam then is not going to come by God breathing into his nostrils and then he became a living soul. He didn't have anything to do with it. He didn't cooperate with it. This one has to be that something will be revealed. In the revelation of Christ are works to be done, are commandments to be obeyed. There are commandments of Christ to be obeyed when Christ is revealed. You obey commandment, you obey commandment, you obey commandment in your obedience. There is, there is first thing that Christ, the revelation of Christ does to us, is set, makes us, when you obey it, it makes you free from laws. Laws. There are certain laws that we are bound by, that we are weaved with. Just like Christ is weaved by laws of the spirit of life. Inside Christ are laws of the spirit of life. Those laws will be formed in you when they are revealed to you and you obey them. There are laws that fabricated us. Terrible laws. Laws of sin and death. So when Christ is revealed and we obey those laws that is when Christ, when there's any revelation then there is the giving of laws laws are not it's just like this zone of everlasting life it's a zone that you know nothing about and you must be humble enough to say i don't know because the judgments of everlasting life are even higher than the judgments of christ there are things that can be allowed in the season of Christ that is not allowed in the season of everlasting life. So we have to be so meek to wait on the Lord. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ waited on the Father as if I don't do anything except I see my Father do it. So dependent. You don't assume. You don't conclude that I know. You, you are, this is a time that we need to really be slow. You weigh actions. You wait on actions. Ask the Lord, is this the right thing to do? Or is this the, the am, I, am, I, am, I, am I going wrongly? Am I concluding wrongly? Am I judging rightly? There, there are some judgments that come on your heart. There are some judgments I wait on for, for like a week. When I'm not sure, I will ask my husband. I say, sweetheart, this is what I'm thinking about this matter. What do you think? This is the action. This is the action I want to take on this matter. But I'm just waiting on my spirit. I'm waiting for what the Lord will say. On my own, I've concluded. But I will not go on my own conclusion. I want to hear what God has. What is God's judgment about this matter? And I'm not getting it clearly. And I know he has higher judgment than me. So I ask him, sweetheart. This is what I'm thinking of about this issue. What do you think? And according to his higher judgment, the last one he told me some days ago, he said, Sweetheart, don't let us discuss this issue again. He said, forget it. Don't ever discuss it with me again. Don't raise it with me again. He has given his judgment on it. And I understand what he's trying to do. He's a higher judgment. Judgment of everlasting life. He said, I don't want us to discuss this issue again. Go and follow your spirit. Walk in the spirit in this area and do what is right. Don't assume that you know. Don't assume that, you know, we, we have some righteousnesses that we have, we have uh, received from growing up, env environment, conversations around us, that it looks right. Like, and somebody who does not have light, when you place it before that person, it will sound very correct. But it's not right according to the judgment of where God is bringing us to. It's high judgment. Say, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As he have, you, each, every time 
the judgment of everlasting life comes. What I discover is that it makes you go down. It, makes, it will make you to lose ground. It will make you to lose the life that you consider your life. That is, that is how you know that this is everlasting judgment. It doesn't vindicate your stand. It doesn't vindicate your right. It makes you lose ground. Then you know God is talking. <laughs> because he wants to give life. But let, let's go back to what I was saying. That Christ needs to be evidently set forth by revelation, by teaching. And when Christ is set forth, truth is revealed. And you, anybody who wants to get the life that is in Christ will have to obey that truth. Praise the Lord. And when you obey the truth, what they are doing to you, they are deleting the laws that fabricated you. They are deleting the laws that make you who you are. Laws of sin and death are dealt with. That is what uh, Paul was saying in Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not. Walk not. Walk not. So the law, the issue there is the issue of walking. <laughs> to attain the life that is in Christ, walk is commanded. Obedience is commanded. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the formation of Christ has to do first with the removing of laws of sin and death for the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus to be formed in us, to become part of our life. When those, what forms a being are laws. Laws. Those laws are generated by revelation. When Christ is revealed, the law that made up Christ is given. And when you obey that law, it has ability to undo laws on our inside. On, but you must obey. You must walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you walk and you walk and you walk, laws are being deleted. Laws are being erased. There's no way law will be erased if you don't obey. You will remain the same person, hearing the same message year after year. And you will be rejoiced. You will be caught in, oh, Rev, high Rev there, high Rev here. Oh, you, you will understand all the cliché. But there's no change because there's no journey. There's no movement. There's no cooperation. There is no obedience to what is being said. Some laws are difficult to remove. Some laws, Christ will not remove it. It is everlasting judgments that will remove it. It's like, you know, some difficult stains on clothes. You put jig, you put soap, it will not go. You scrub, if you over scrub it, the cloth will tear. That's why you at times when you are, you know, this everlasting light is even giving me understanding on how to handle shortcomings and the uh, um, infirmities from people. There are some infirmities you must not overflog. You will just kill the person because the person does not have ability to relinquish, doesn't have capacity to relinquish that thing. So on your part, what is commanded on your part is forbearance. You now become, begin to see why God said, with all long suffering, for bearing one another in love, is to allow for salvation at each level. I now begin to understand why God will tell me, don't talk about this issue. Don't correct this thing. Because at times, correcting some issues will further gender unrighteousness. Because that's infirmity, bongboni. Is deeply rooted. So just ordinary, the Lord knows you can't remove it. So he tells you, can you forbear it? 
can you at times overlook issues? Can you be patient with this person? This is the wisdom of salvation that God will bring us into. He will tell you, can you... <laughs> God is, is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. If I'll teach you, Papa, so crepa, well, this sense so fretty and as a stoman, era taha sile bra fio de la casa andrea de sale brata sonia la hayden, a preto safrelia to prastes trastisia trastes savakia, era saste triasse trasta ha sin tahale kadasen. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a family. 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 For you see, even my kingdom is a kingdom that's a family. It's a family. It's a family. It's a family. And you are in your stratus. You are in your stratus. You occupy various stratus in the hierarchy of the family based on understanding. Based on understanding. Based on exposure. Based on understanding. Based on comprehension. You occupy different stratus. You occupy different stratus. And I, in my wisdom, even the fatherly dimension of my wisdom, sees to the catering of all stratus, all stratus, all stratus are catered for by me. And it is not even, even in my wisdom to have those of high understanding to pray or to plague those of low understanding. No. There is a provision for every joint to supply and every part to be taken care of. That is why they that are of wisdom, even they that are spiritual, even they that are spiritual, even they that are spiritual must demonstrate even the spirituality in the spirit of meekness with the spirit of meekness in dealing with them that do not have even as it were your level of comprehension for you do not pray upon them that do not understand what you don't what you understand for there be things that I know that you also don't know and I do not relate with you from that level I come to your level I come to your level if I stay in my level if I stay in my level no one will be saved no one will come up but I come down I am the first condescender and anyone that follows my path will also condescend will also forbear, will also manage, will also bear with, oh bear with, you will learn to bear, you will learn to bear, everlasting strength will give you strength to bear, you will learn to bear with the unbearable because I bear with the unbearable, I bear with the unbearable, I will die with that strength to bear with the unbearable, for none is unbearable says the spirit of God, none is unbearable and everlasting strength will have you bear with the unbearable, this so called unbearable that every Everyone have an opportunity to grow. Everyone have an opportunity to grow and come from understanding to understanding and come from understanding to understanding. For the wisdom of Satan is to cut off the shrubs, is to cut off the herbs, is to cut off the seedlings so that they don't become trees. They don't become trees. And sometimes he uses even them that are supposedly to come to trees, uses them to step on the shrubs, to step on the shrubs. Don't step on my shrubs. Don't step on my seedlings. Don't step on my nursery. Don't trample down my nursery forbear how oh, forbear help my nursery to grow for you are once a seedling you are once without understanding you are once also dark and they that were ahead of you also bore with your infirmities they bore with your infirmities let me also use you to bear with the infirmities of other seedlings that the whole house may be nourished and edified lacking nothing says the spirit of god hallelujah this is fantastic this is the wisdom of salvation. The Bible says, out of, out of Zion, saviors will arise. Save, you can't save if you are not like the Lord. Saviors will arise 
out of Zion. Saviors who will be tender. Who will, oh, the Lord. I had an encounter. I think I've shared it several times last year. <laughs> I had an encounter. The Lord stood on my head for days. Tender. 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 Everywhere I went. I went for a party. Birthday party. Inside the church, the sin was still on my head. Tender. 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 He was preparing me for an action that was going to offend me greatly. And he had to come with that, uh, what is it called? Encounter for days to let me see how serious it was for me to be tender. Because my natural reaction is to react in a very rash way. That how dare you say this to me? And then I will deal with you accordingly. Sure you understand? <laughs> so he said, tender, tender, love. Tender, love. Tender, love. Love. Lord, I was wondering. Ah, ah, Lord, that kind somebody, if you take this, it means you are taking nonsense. If you take it, this has to be corrected. He said, don't correct it. He said, don't correct it. I said, eh. He said, don't even, don't, don't, don't even draw the person's attention to it. I said, eh. I said, no, but this person will not know that what uh, the person has done is right or wrong. He said, but, I mean, there is also room for correction. The Bible says correct. Eh? Uh, there's one scripture, verse of scripture. Eh? Correct with uh, rebuke, with all authority. And the Lord said, this one does not fit into this situation. <laughs> After all, the Bible says, rebuke, correct, with all authority. And the Lord said, no. This one, the judgment on this matter is tenderness and love. So instead of cracking down on this person, why don't you just show love? Why don't you just overlook it? I said, Lord, why would I do this one? He said, because of the blessing. Because of the blessing. Because of the inheritance. That was the word he used. He said, because of the inheritance. This is the conversation that is commanded in this situation for you to inherit everlasting life. So I started obeying gradually, gradually, until I just forgot the thing itself. The thing didn't mean anything to me again. <laughs> I was even able to relate with the person without that thing. Although once in a while, the devil just bring it. But I said, the Lord said, he has given his judgment on this matter. You know, the devil doesn't leave you alone. You see, come and bring those words and say, why should the person address you like this? And they say, eh, at times it will catch your heart. Then you tell yourself, this is God's judgment on it. God has given his word on this issue, and this is what we are going to do. May God make us more tender. May God make, may God make us more accommodating. I used to have that problem. When I said that, when was, when was I saying it? Growing up, you know, with my, my mates, generally, we all know what we should do at the right time. The right thing to do, you know how to address each other. We can harass ourselves, but we are mates. We harass ourselves, and it doesn't mean anything to us. And we continue in our life. Sure, you understand? Then I now have to mix with brethren. Who didn't have that kind of, um, is it upbringing or exposure? I, I think I, I gave an, uh, I, um, an example when I was ministering, which day was that? That when, one time I went, you know, I traveled with um, Anu and uh, my sister, my younger brother, is our last born in the family. We, we were, my sister, myself, and uh, Anu, we were to go for a conference outside London. And there was a time we must start, because we we're going to drive, there was a time we must start going so that we can meet the conference. And that day was my brother's uh, birthday, breakfast and lunch before we left. He was going to use his money to buy the food though, and cook. He's a great cook. So we told him, if this your food is not ready by 12, you will eat it by yourself. You will eat it all alone. 
jokingly, you know, that's, that's a, a, a heart that, of course, he will not take offense because he knows that we are talking out of love. You say that to somebody and say, I, I, I'm even going to use my money to cook. I'm even going to cook for them. They are not even appreciating that I'm going to cook for them. They are, they are, they are telling me and commanding me that I should finish. <laughs> I should finish it at a particular time. It meant nothing to him. It meant nothing, it meant nothing to us. See, you understand? So he took the challenge. Early in the morning, breakfast, special breakfast. We call it designer egg. He had fried the egg. So delicious, so everything was inside the egg. You know, designer. The egg is really designer because shrimps will be there, uh, hot dog will be there, uh, everything you can think of will be there. And he used his money to buy it. And we're still commanding him on when he should be ready. That is, God will enlarge our heart not to see wrongly into things. Because at times somebody says something innocently, you conclude it wrongly. Just because there must be something wrong with what that person has said or done. Say you understand? The Lord will enlarge our heart to be innocent. <laughs> to be innocent. We need to be innocent. To be children. We were relating like children. Ah, we are going by 12. And he too took the challenge, made the food, we ate it. Then he started making lunch. What I was trying driving at, by 12 on the dot, everybody was ready. Everybody was ready. And we started, the food was ready. Everything, he packed the food for us because it was not long before we took a breakfast. He packed the food for us. We carried it. We all left. 12 on the dot. Ah, when I looked at it, I said, oh my God, how I wish this is how everybody I'm living with. <laughs> ah, I just, I said, ah, how I wish everybody I'm living with is like this. That we say 12 and everybody is ready by 12, we go. Ah, at times I will be in the car. We have all said this is the time we are living. You know? One day, that I can never forget that day. We were going somewhere, waiting for a meeting. We told everybody we are living at this time. I carried my bag to walk into the car and I saw somebody carrying buckets <laughs> to the bathroom. <laughs> I, I said, Kilo Shele, we, we all agreed yesterday that this is the time we are going. Carrying buckets. A lot of times I will sit inside the car. I'll be waiting for people. I say, Aki Lode. You know, it's not in my head. It's not in my head. But the Lord now to use those situations to make me be patient. To stretch. That was it. Stretch and stretch and stretch. At times I will start crying. Because stretching was not easy. Ah. When, why would I say, if I say this one now, I'll say the same thing today, tomorrow. I'll say the same thing. I'll say the same thing. Fourth time, I will scream and shout. <laughs> but I now discovered we don't all have the same exposure, the same upbringing. In our days, we were trained from young. Number one, to obey instructions. It is, it is a lifestyle. You must obey instructions. From primary school, you enter school, you march. I don't know some of you that, all of you went to nursery school. I went to a local school, to government primary school. Where you get to school in the morning, you must not come late. Except those who like cane. Me, I don't like cane. Because I don't like cane, I don't like to misbehave. You come, there are some teachers, their cane is so long. Ha! Ah, we had one teacher in my second in primary school. We call him Baba Scout. I prayed that I would never be in Baba Scout class. Because when he wants to beat you, he will carry you and hang you on the door. You must hold the door by yourself. 
to be beaten and you must not fall. You must not, if you fall, he will start counting from the beginning. And his cane is long. That thing puts fear in a child. So because there is fear in you, you align. You don't do what, if I don't like cane, so I don't do what will make people beat me. So from young, we pick, early in the morning you come to school, you pick um, paper. Round the school, everybody will be singing and picking it, singing. They are configuring us to obedience, to authority. You pick, uh, who, are, who born you to say I'm not picking? Ah, they have not born that child. They have not born that child. So you don't really see strong-headed, rebellious children in those days because they will be the hell out of you. If you don't yield to building, build beating, then they send you away. They send you away. I remember in my secondary school, we had a teacher that came from somewhere to come and teach us English. But instead of teaching us English, her English was so bad. She was not teaching us well. Uh -uh. We said, what kind of teacher is this one? He's not teaching us well. And it became so, much, so pro. And you know, English is compulsory. Whichever course you are going to take, you must pass English. That was our form three. I remember very well. So we all came together in the class that this English teacher is not good enough. We need to complain to the principal. We didn't know that was our undoing. So we all went to the principal and said, this our English teacher is not good. She does this, she does that. Hey, God of heaven, who sent us job? Who sent us message? Our, teach, our principal was an Irish woman, Oibo. Very committed but strict human being. The fear, we call her, her name was Sister Una. The fear, if Leke's mom is there, she will understand what I'm talking about. The fear of Sister Una is the beginning of wisdom. You don't need to see her. Hearing her voice alone, you, 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 must, you, must, you must disappear. So we went to tell her, that uh, our teacher, hey, she looked at us. Who gave you the right to complain about your teacher? You have right to complain? He said, okay. The first two periods of the morning that we should all stand in the assembly. No entering into class. We stood, you know, it was then I knew that standing is punishment because people were fainting. They were not doing anything, they were just standing. Two periods. We stood. People were fainting. People were so uncomfortable. Some people were going to vomit. Some, so many things. Then we, since then, nobody taught us. It, that's our... <laughs> she was our teacher until we finished. <laughs> that year. Nobody dare talk about it. So uh, the school, the kind of school we I went to, they don't riot to. There's nothing like it cannot enter your head that you will do riot. When I hear students are rioting in secondary school, like, ah, who is the secondary school? I say, eh, who is their principal? Talon Kowon. Do you understand? So such was the way we grew. Then I now see that the generation after didn't grow that way at all. And my undoing was that I was not expecting the standard I used to grow from other people. And the Lord said, Koribe, people don't have such standard. And so you must forbear with them because they are sheep, they are lambs. They didn't have your kind of upbringing. They didn't have the kind of strictness that you were brought up with. So you have to forbear. You have to, my secondary school, you are in Form 1, you abuse a Form 2 student, you are finished. All the Form 2 students will gang up against you until you are ready to leave that school. You are finished. Zero tolerance for rudeness. Next, somebody is two years older than you, you dare not. 
You are just finished. Not to talk of a from five. You are finished. You are, you are just, your own is, you will be miserable until you leave that school. Because not only the person you were rude to will deal with you, all the classmates. So, you know, those things, so, those, some things, I find them odd. I find them very strange. <laughs> what is happening? And the Lord will say, cool temper. Cool temper. Cool temper. Forbear. Endure. It was not easy, it was tough. Some of them, I will cry. I will cry. You know what? The standards that you were raised with has been violated. That, those were the laws that, that formed me. So when it is violated, it is painful. And when it is violated, the, next, the normal thing is that you want to correct it. You want to say you don't violate this law. But there is a higher law of forbearance and endurance. Because a lot of times we violate God's laws. Many times we violate his laws. Standards, he will tell us, don't do it like this. You will come, you will do exactly the opposite of what he has told you not to do. You will do it again. He, will, he can say, how many of us has God stayed on certain things on us for years and we have not been able to relinquish it? For years. And God is so wonderful. He will keep blessing you. <laughs> May we be like him. May we be like him. May we be like him. You know, recently, something happened in the house and my husband called me to order. Ah, when you you know, I was wondering somebody, he wants me to inherit the inheritance. He wants, so he's hard on me in every way. There's nothing, I, he can never tell me you are right. Even if it's so obvious that the person is wrong, he will say, can't you look it at it in another way? At times he will say, can't you just look at it that this person is weak in this area and forbear? Ah, ah. And he say, I'm the one who is also... Who is also so, you know, in the house, our NEPA bill is like 60,000 naira a month. Yes, every month. We buy 30,000 charge. We finish it in two weeks. Two weeks. We buy another one. So, and so every month is 60,000. So, of course, you will be particular about how people use light, put a fan on when there's nobody there, put on light. So, one day I went to the kitchen. I now saw somebody put a, a whole plantain inside the grill to grill. And the no, which means that uh, it is not it's not the no grill the grill. It's not the major meal, oh, it's a, a side side meal because the major meal has been done with. But that was not even the problem. The way the person put a bully, the way the person put it in the grill, when you want to grill. You cut the plantain so that it can be smaller and it can cook faster. And then you use less electricity. So I saw a whole plantain inside the grill. <laughs> so and I said, who is grilling plantain like this? Who is grilling plantain like this? A whole plantain. So the person came up and said, mommy, I'm the one. I said, this is not the way we grill plantain. You cut it so that it can cook faster and we can reduce... My husband called me. <laughs> Say, what? 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 Say, why did you shout like that? <laughs> I said, ah, can't you see what he did? A whole plantain inside the grill. With the amount of money we pay for electricity, a whole plantain. He said, eh, that this person does not know better. 
and I didn't need to shout like that. That I shouldn't have shouted like that. I should have just called him and explained to him that next time you cut it into a bit small sizes and then you... I said so, Emi Motu Jebi. The man is operating some everlasting commandments. I don't even understand again. <laughs> he has gone. So I, I had to take that correction. That okay. No matter how the thing is biting me, I should call the person and say, eh, cut this thing into small bits and uh, put it so that it will cook faster. We will use less. Uh, in fact, even the grill itself will be struggling to cook the, this thing. Overuse of the grill. That thing came spontaneously from him. It has become part of him. He just called me. Ah, ah, why did you shout like that? I said, said no, you don't, need, you don't have to shout like that. You don't have to shout. I am always the one that will be guilty. <laughs> but it's not that he wants to make me guilty. He wants me to align. He will tell me, there is something you need to come to my wife. There is something I've been waiting for you to come in into. You need to align this way. You need to align this way. I want you to come to the best of God. You need to align. You need to align. You need to align. When I want to get angry, say, take it easy, sweetheart. Take it easy. Because of what you want to carry. Take it easy. Because of what you want to carry, you need to align. Thank you. You are going to become a fool completely. Oh, yeah, give us the distance. <laughs> thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm showing you, showing, showing you. I am showing you. I am answering you. I am answering the heart cry, even your heart cry. For you have cried, give, give me, give me, give me everlasting life. Give me everlasting life. I'm showing you. I'm showing you the boundaries. I'm showing you the parameters. I'm showing you even measures of the judgment. Measures of the judgment. For you see, it is a very precise life. It is a very precise life. It's a very precise life. It is a precise life. That's whose precision whose precision is beyond humanity. Its precision is beyond humanity. Its precision is beyond humanity. And there are things, there are even there are boundaries of the human life. There are boundaries of the human life. There are boundaries of the human life. There are things that it would take that a man knows that he himself would not be able to do. That according to all the judgments of man, according to all the standards of what is called even a good man, a man would conclude judgments at that level. But you see, everlasting life is higher. It is higher. It is higher. It is higher. It is higher. And I'm showing you measures of the boundaries. Measures of the boundaries. For it is first of all a nature. It is first of all a nature. It's first of all a nature. A conversation that can be lived out by a man. It can be lived out by a man. It can be lived out by a man. For you see a man has already lived it out. A man has already lived it out and fulfilled it. And he is called even the author of eternal salvation. Because he obeyed a conversation. He obeyed a 
conversation. He walked the path of a conversation. And I'm showing you measures of this conversation. In answer to your prayers. In answer to your waiting. In answer to your cry. In answer to your cry for access to this life. I am showing you the parameters. For as I said to you, even at the earlier times, it is not what you think. It is what, what you have concluded it to be. It is a life. It is a life that flies under the radar of carnality. Under the radar of flesh. Under the radar of the devil. For you see that devil, the very devil, the very devil, even Satan, the one you are confronting, he's in the details. He is in those details. He hides in those details. He hides in those corners. In those corners that he has taught you to excuse and say they do not matter. He's a liar. He knows they matter. He knows they can disqualify you. He knows they can disqualify you from the fullness of the precise life that is being painted. He knows. He knows. He knows. So hear from me. He is in those details. He is in those details. He hides in those details. He hides in those responses. He hides in those reactions. He knows that as you live in those reactions you are disqualified because you do not stand upright and perfect before me. I am the embodiment of precision. I am precise to the precision of preciseness. Nothing is more precise than I am. And he knows that to fall short of my precision. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. He is in those details. So fight. Fight to see him in those details. Anyone that is raised to see everlasting life will recognize him in those details and will have wisdom to hide and dodge him in those details. He is in those details. He is in those details. And I am coming for those details. I want to live in those details. I want to live out from those details. Those seemingly inconsequential places where he has hidden. I want to live there. I want to come there. I want to reign there. My dominion must be found there. Even my life must be found there. So is the spirit of God. Oh God so these our heads must be dodging now dodging dodging well you see you can't dodge except the standards are raised you have to have understanding of the standard praise the Lord what the Lord is requiring now I was talking about Christ the formation of Christ Christ must be formed in us now, the for, I said the formation of Christ is different from the new birth. The formation of Christ requires obedience. Obedience to laws that are revealed. Christ is revealed. Truth. that He said, you have not so lent Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 4. If so be that you have heard him and you have been taught by him as the truth. The truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. So there are truths that must be revealed to us. And Paul said, I mean, Paul said to the Galatian Christians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, the truth that they have revealed to you by the revelation of Christ? So that Christ will be formed in you. They will raise laws. Laws. There are human laws. Natural human laws, righteousnesses of man that we, that we were raised with, that is not the righteousness of God. And if you stand on that, it will rob you of the life of God. So why we need, like I said, the way I was raised, from two, you call from three, senior. It's so strict that if a form three repeats with you, you dare not call them by name. You see, call them senior until you finish school. In fact, when we finished school, we found it difficult to call our seniors by name. It was so repeated in us, that culture of, of respect. So repeated. So repeated. So when I, my, my younger sister, she's, she'll be 52 now this year she didn't meet me in secondary school she didn't see my brake light in university so when we are talking i say ah 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 my, my Mr. So, you didn't see my brake light in secondary school <laughs> not to talk of you say you didn't see my brake light don't talk nonsense to me <laughs> and she understands say ah so <laughs> You don't, you don't fathom things like that, way, eh? Not to talk of our last born. 
If you say, eh, who exactly are you talking to? Amy. <laughs> He's not a young man, no. The grandfather. <laughs> Ah, he's a grandfather now. But you see, that culture, we maintain it. It's a culture that is maintained. We grew up with that. Somebody is two years older than you, you dare not look at the face. In Ondo, where we grew, we call Egi. Egi. Although we not, because we are age mates, two years is still your age mate. So Egi, you can say, Egi, that is Egi, be careful. <laughs> because it's just two years. Say, eh, look at this. Look at that. I know one of them. He said, well, don't let me abuse Reverend Mrs. You. She's older than me. <laughs> hey, we are joking. He said, Reverend Mrs. Don't let me abuse Reverend Mrs. I said, you have already abused me. <laughs> That's the way we, I have one auntie, very funny auntie. I don't call her for a long time. So the day I call her, say, mm, stupid girl, stupid girl. It means nothing to me. Even though I'm, I don't say, ah, don't you know me? A whole Reverend Mrs. To her, I'm her little baby. <laughs> Say, stupid girl, where have you been? She doesn't hate me, she loves me. To her, I'm just talking to, it's like um, teasing. But that one is for outside. In the house of God, you will get a bad name if you do that. You won't, you, I won't try that. I won't even try that. Sure, you understand? But people who are, who are close to me, I won't call them stupid, but there, there's a way you tease people who are close to you. You tease and it is not a big deal. But caution also has to be taken because of people's frailty, people's, um, people's heart, people's exposure, people's uh, different, this thing like that. Like I can talk to somebody, I think somebody was supposed to be very close to me, we play, we talk. So there was some money that went into her account. And she was now telling me, I said, ah, where's my money? Go and send me my money now. Say, gosh, I will send it to her. I will send it. Say, but I wanted to send it. But I discovered that I will not be able to send it because that is all the money in my account. It will not go out. I said, hey, eh, so you don't have money. Hey, so, so, Lowo, you don't have money, eh? She was laughing. Eh, so you don't have money. I laughed. <laughs> oh, Lowo. Ah ah oh lowo e wo ko lowo I was teasing her because I got to know she didn't have money I would never collect that money from her I will never but teasing somebody who is not uh, who is whose heart is not large we say ah mommy is abusing me that I don't have money <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Come, my mommy is abusing me that I don't have money, eh? is, is he, am I the only one that will not have money? Your heart should be enlarged. Be innocent. Be innocent to be able to take some, some uh, so when you come across, but you also have to be sensitive. When I know your configuration, I know the kind of jokes I bring around you. I know the kind, that, that is still wisdom. Because you can't say, ah, everybody should be able to take what you can take. You see wisdom, you are careful with the kind of jokes you bring around people. So when I told her, I said, make sure you don't send that money. Say, ah, mommy, I said, don't send it, go and spend it. After all, you don't have money. I mean, you have money. <laughs> that I will do to somebody I am close to. Say you understand? <laughs> so, those standards that we grew up with, they are human righteous standard even though they are okay for relationship i don't expect you to look at me and abuse me it is not even right it's, it's not christ's life it's naturally it's not right spiritually it's not right it's not right even if i misbehave to you you don't have the right to talk at me you understand what i'm saying the best you will do is mommy I, and if you are close to me, you know I'm very approachable. I look tough, but I'm very jovial and approachable. Ah, mommy, this thing you did, oh, I didn't like it, oh. I, will, I have enough conscience to tell you I'm sorry. Even if you don't, if I do something, my conscience, I have a very sensitive conscience. My conscience talks to me, I will come and apologize to you. 
People in the house have done that to them over the years. I will say sorry because of judgment that I have. I'm sorry, you. She, I didn't. Uh, I, I'm sorry the way I talked. You understand what I'm saying? So the best you can do is, ah, mommy, I'm really hot. Oh. Hey, what hurt you? That thing you did. I'm telling you, I will. Is that I will explain? But if it is, if it hurts you, I will apologize to you. I will apologize. I'm good at that. So, but what I'm trying to say is that even at that, your heart should be large enough to take insult. That is what the Lord taught me. Yes. Your heart should be large enough to take insult and still love the person who insulted you. It's not easy, but it's possible because it's a prerequisite for the entrance. Even though somebody has done what is what the Lord told me some time ago, because I used to be bothered about you know things people say, and he said, Can you ignore the things? Can you ignore things that people say and just live your life? He said, ignore those things, don't don't even take it to heart. If you hear, like, I would, like my husband will say, did you hear that? You say, hey, what did you hear? <laughs> he asked me, so what did you hear? I said, you didn't hear? Say, hey. say I didn't hear. You go long, bo, bo, ku, bo. <laughs> say, keep hearing what you are hearing. Me, I didn't hear. I need my own heart to preach the gospel. Say, I need my heart to preach the gospel. So you tell me, please stop this. Don't stop discussing this kind of thing with me. Stop discuss. Don't discuss it with me again. Let's not talk about this. It's too low for us at the level that we are in. Say this is too low. Don't discuss it with me again. This is it's like you bringing a field into something pure and clean. And the only way you can do that is you are seeing the inheritance. That is the motivation for you to to let go of many things and focus on the inheritance so for christ to be formed there needs to be obedience christ comes to break down those laws those laws inside us formation they are righteousnesses but they are below the righteousness of christ so he tells you don't do it this way don't do it that way don't do it this way even when you have the right to do it this way don't do it that way like i said what i said to my brother my brother will be 50 this year uh, we told him, if you don't finish before 12, you will eat your food yourself. Now, I cannot say that to some brethren. I can say that to people who I'm close to, who we understand where I'm talking from, but I can't say it to some people. I have to be very careful so I don't cause offense. But to some people, you, you don't say, uh, you should be able to take it now. Every other person can take it. No, 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 no. You are not being sensitive. People's makeup differ. People's exposure differ. What people have seen, she's on the quiet side. I'm on the talking side. And we live together. You know, I used to quarrel with her that she doesn't talk. Because me, when I buy shoe and bring it to the house, hey, it's okay, come and see, <laughs> see my shoe. I just bought shoe. She would not immediately. That is me. Come and see my shoe. Hey, can't you see it? Hey, hey, I saw how much did you buy? I bought it. Where did you buy it from? I said, that is me. I still do it in my house till tomorrow. Buy shoe. I, I, wow, today. Everybody comes. <laughs> Everybody, you give me something. I bring it. Everybody, come and see. Come and see. I'll try it in their presence. All of them, all, especially the girls, they know me to my skin. I try my dress in their presence. Eh, there and there, we determine which occasion it will go for. We determine which shoe we match it. <laughs> that is my life. But Reverend Zogi is so quiet. She'll buy shoe for two months and take it into her room. The day she will wear it, I'll say, ah, when did you buy this shoe? Two months ago, I say, ah, ah. Will you didn't show me now? Ah, I will get angry. Why did she show me? But that is who she is. She's not like me. 
Me, as I'm entering the house, I'm showing my own to everybody. Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, whoa, everybody is coming in. Lola Day is coming. If Lola Day is not going to say, Lola Day, come on. Come on, come on, send him for. Everybody comes. Hey, mommy. Hey, where did this one come? Who gave you this one? You say, we'll try it. Can, is it comfortable? Can you wear it to preach? Can you stand on it? Okay, if you can't wear it to preach, it will go for some occasion. That is how we live. But everybody is not like that. Somebody else will see you do that and say, ah, ah, why is she showing everybody? Is she showing? Is she showing? <laughs> is she showing off? Is she vaunting it? Eh? <laughs> eh? Innocence. Innocence. Innocent. We need to grow in it. Why is she? Do, I, I, I'm so free. I think I'm trying to be careful now to close up a little because not everybody can take that. I'm so free to the extent that I can show you how much is in my account. I can show you. Say, eh? Mommy, you have this kind of money. I'm showing you so that in case you need money, you come and ask me. So, ah, so mommy in the house, this kind of well, mommy, me, me need the wo. Eh. Everybody's not like that. And so, initially, when I see people. Doing shuku, I say, why, why is this person behaving like this? But I'm getting to know that people are arranged differently. And you have to, that is not, my own uh, arrangement is not the best. Because at times I get into trouble with that. And the Lord will tell me, close up a little. Close up. It's not the best. The other person's arrangement is not the best either. Everybody, we, we are formed by exposure, by heredity, society, upbringing, and experiences. Experiences form us differently. People who are suspicious, you'd notice they come from polygamous homes. Where you suspect everybody. Abi, 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 hey, hey. Praise the Lord. So, why am I saying this? So that you will give room for people's formation that is awaiting transformation. Uh, formations. Awaiting transformation. Because my own formation also is awaiting transformation. Praise the Lord. So don't conclude that your arrangement is the best. Your arrangement is not the best. We need to be arranged, aligned by revelations. Of Christ to start with to first remove the fundamental of our offer even things we call right Christ will come and redefine it and say this is not right and you have to believe it and accept it and change obey when you obey over time you change that now becomes your part of your formation until Christ is fully formed in you why do we need Christ to be fully formed in us in the obedience to Christ you see that your heart is becoming tender. That thing, I will always say it. Obedience to Christ has a way of making your heart tender towards obedience. You get used to it because if you if you you can glance through the time of Christ without changing, you will not your heart will become giddy. And that heart cannot be brought to the season of everlasting commandments. 
That's what I'm, I'm trying to drive at. Praise the Lord. So when Christ is fully formed, a godly man is raised, a man of life is raised. It is that man that can now come and begin to get everlasting judgments. That's the man, because everlasting life will not be conferred on you. Like uh, God breathed into uh, Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. No, the season of everlasting life is a season of obedience also. Obedience to what? Obedience to the revelation of the Son of God, the everlasting Father. And we have learned that Jesus is the one to give us everlasting life. Jesus is the one that the Father gave everlasting life to. He has trapped everlasting life. The Father gave it to him. And he has the right to also give to us. But the way he will give it to us, he said, if you hear my sayings, my sayings, part of the sayings are the things we are talking about. Yesterday we were talking about the sayings, part of the sayings in Lekki yesterday. And everybody was sighing. Everybody was sighing. I don't know what went on in the heart of people when they were going home. Some people's hearts were quick to respond. Some people were sighing. Somebody came to me and said, there's somebody I need to go and call. I have forgiven the person halfway. I have to go and complete the forgiveness. <laughs> By calling the person. Say this one that they said we should love our enemies. You forgive somebody halfway. Say I'm going to complete the rest. I'm going to call now. I'm going to make a call. That's a good step. That's a good step. Good step to obedience. Good step. When you do that, God will bring other ones. Other ones will be showing you judgment. Showing you judgment. What am I saying? Everlasting life. Like I said, the song that woke me up this morning. You can measure unto me your commandment of everlasting life. I want to live your life. Measure unto me your commandment of everlasting life. Take me to the place where I will have no say. Abi? <laughs> Those are commandments of everlasting life. Where you have no say. You think you are supposed to talk. It's a be long, be dumb. Be dumb. It's not what we know. It's as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, they are his thoughts because it's about his life. It is his life. Yesterday after the ministry, I was telling the pastors, I said, when you say God is good, these are the things that made him good. These are the laws, the arrangements on his inside that made him good. That he will cause his rain to fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous. He's a good God. So when you want to say I'm good, let's put to the test. Are you able to love your enemy? Are you able to pray for them that curse you? Curse, oh, not abuse. You know abuse, the way abuse gets to us. This one is curse. Yeah, <laughs> curse, <laughs> The normal reaction, when somebody curses you, what is your normal reaction? What da pada? Instant. Instant. Without thinking. Eh? With the cause self, it will not stop on that person. It will stop, it will go to the father, the father, and the generation to the fourth generation. How dare you curse me? How dare you curse me? How dare you curse me? <laughs> the fourth generation of that person must partake of the cause. Who made us to be like that? Is the devil. The hater of God and the hater of the children of God. And you, you, know, you know, to fly below the radar 
of Satan to, to dodge his things. The, the easiest thing to do is to be little. Don't see yourself as still being too big to be abused. If you cost me, eh? the Bible says a cost, costless, shall not alight. If I didn't do anything that warrants cost, the cost will not rest on me. So I don't need to return it back to you to make sure that uh, it doesn't affect me. When I have that understanding, your cost will mean nothing to me, and then it does not demand my response. But you see, you must have grown in the judgment of Christ. You must know some things to make you understand certain things that certain things don't need response. Because those things does not stop you on your path to life. It is when you respond, self, that your journey is truncated. <laughs> what am I saying? Obedience is necessary to come to everlasting life. Just like Adam was made a living soul and was commanded not to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so that his journey would not be truncated. He needed to make progress by obeying commandment. So also you, after we become Christ, after Christ is formed in us, our journey has not ended because where God is taking us to is in my image after my likeness. And like I said, God is not a living soul. Neither is God Christ. God is an eternal being. God is eternal. God is everlasting. Anybody who will be in his image and his likeness must trap everlasting life to be able to get eternal life. All these zones, they are governed by laws they are governed by commandments that we must obey and god is rolling out the commandments to us bit by bit bit by bit he's opening it to us so that we can have an idea where we are going it is god's life it is god's zone it is god's area it's god's terrain he, they are governed by his laws his laws you know he said I will write my laws. If any, if any man has my what? My commandment. My commandment. These are laws that govern him. They are, we are going to have to obey his laws. So the, the prayer we are praying is measure those laws to me. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. I want to live your life. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. Commandments of everlasting life. They are the commandments that God himself uses. They are the commandments that God himself obeys. They are higher than the commandments of Christ. That's why you need to have used Christ and gotten used to the obedience of Christ. Christ gives you the kind of heart that can take everlasting commandments. It makes your heart tender, heart of flesh. Hearts that can be instructed after the pattern of everlasting life. Commandments. Anybody that we want to take everlasting life must be ready to obey the commandments of everlasting life. And the commandments of everlasting life are given when the Son of God is revealed, when the Son of God is opened. When we see, that's why he said in um, um, John chapter 6, from verse 40, 39. John chapter 6. And this is a will. This is the Father's will, 
which this is the father's will which had sent me that of all which he had given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day we have learned that the last day is the day that you finish everlasting life commandments then there will be a raising hallelujah everlasting life is a raising a stature of everlasting life is raised when you are obeying everlasting commandments that are given then the next verse is what i want to talk about hallelujah the next verse verse 40 verse 40 I'll read it from my and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son everyone which seeth the son everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day everyone which seeth the son everyone have been tempted to stand up since tempted i think everyone which seeth the son so having everlasting life is tied to seeing the son now why do we need to see the son there are laws that made up the son to see the son is to comprehend the son understand the things that made up the son everlast the son is a fabrication of laws of everlasting life they call him everlasting father he came into everlasting life by laws that the father gave to him he saw the father he said what i see my father do that i do which means when you see the son what are you seeing you are seeing commandments to do when you see the son you are seeing what to do when you see the son you are seeing what to do. <laughs> to, you know our to-do list. Hmm? This one, what to do is in seeing the sun. Anyone that sees the sun and believes, so it's not just saying you believe. Believe is you agree and align with what you are seeing because what you are seeing are the laws that made the son an everlasting man everlasting commandments like i, I was sharing yesterday at eleki that verse of scripture we have all read it love your enemy a pastor you made me laugh yesterday he said that thing he has read it several times but it's like a part of his brain is close to it <laughs> that is closed down shut down to it because you just read it as um you, you, i mean you are not responding to it if I, you don't even see it that it applies to you but god it doesn't apply to me <laughs> god just put it inside the bible eh, eh? and that god just put it there because you do contrary to it and you can cut it we can even preach with it But those are everlasting demands. So, of recent, I've been reading it, even though even God has led me along that path in a measure. Say you understand? He has given me instructions. I will do it and tell me, me, I'm not like this. I'm like this. And I will obey. But there's still some part of you that doesn't, you know, the natural response to them that hate you 
is hatred. If you don't hate at all, because God has dealt with hatred, it will be difficult for you to naturally do good. Natu no, it's not easy to naturally do good. You have to exert some strength based on commandment and instructions of God. Cause is a conscious effort. You have to, you, you have to pray. You, you have to, you have, not just pray. If God instructs, do it. When you do it and do it and do it, you, you see that that thing loses its strength. Natural. What we are raised with. If Pastor Thompson says, Mommy, I need 100,000. Hmm? I dealt with him some time ago. We traveled together to London. So, the, our, when we arrived in London, our luggage didn't arrive. The plane, I don't know what happened. So, KLM now gave us... <laughs> <laughs> said we are giving allowance to go and uh, shop for 100 uh, dollar euros they will give us you know essential things while we are waiting for our this thing to come our luggage to come so we are uh, under euros open ticket like that we now enter me i was planning to buy my another winter and uh, long winter spring jacket because the one I had was already bad. So, and normally, if they didn't give me that allowance, the wind, spring jacket I bought, I would have bought it because I went for a good one that was expensive. So I can use, so I used my total deceiver. I bought more than that, thinking that when we give them the receipt, and they say at least it's 100 euros, they would, to my, my surprise, they refunded everything I claimed on the receipt. Pastor Thompson now entered shop. And bought things and stopped at uh, 50 or 60 euros. So they gave him his 60 euros. So when they brought the money, I said, ah, You spent just, I said, he said, Hey, that he was feeling. I said, Buy, you should have bought something for the people in your house. At least they won't ask you for the size. He said, hey, Okay, give me out of your own. I said, You walk. He <laughs> said, Okay, for me, for me, Lara, oh, he, give me out of your own money. I said, hey, Walk. When they gave us the same allowance, you went and went below. I said, me on if well. And I didn't give him. <laughs> ah, they said, go and spend 100 euro. You spent 60. Me, I spent more than 100. They gave him more than 100. Wow. And they gave him 60. <laughs> ah, you know, I said, I should give you out of my I said, like, yeah, I won't give you. I won't give you. Maybe I should have given you, I should have walked in love towards, but it's a long time now. <laughs> hey, that was serious dealing. Next time, go and spend more than. <laughs> they gave me, I was expecting them to give the, the hundred and say, okay, this is how much we promised. But they paid everything. Ah, okay now. So, <laughs> but I thought it's story time. Eh? Just say lesson. So what am I saying? <laughs> it's very easy. If he comes to me and says, Mommy, I need 100,000. I won't think twice. Because a lot of things we operate on my mind. Pastor Thompson Ojebe. That if it's me that goes to him for 100,000, you will not, if he doesn't have it, he will go and borrow it and say, ah, mommy, care. you know, that is how we relate. We react naturally. Very easy to react. Ah, Pastor Thompson is not like that. If he's the one, I'm the one in need, he will go and look for the money and bring it to me. So if he needs money and I don't have it, I'll go and look for it. But somebody who is not good to you. Ah, I can't keep myself. You, you will not... You will not be able to go out of your way. I don't have this. I don't have. 
even if I, if I have, I would, uh, it has use. Uh, school fees. If I, when you don't have, you will think of what you do, you do with that money. Uh, you spray your car. <laughs> that doesn't need spraying. <laughs> but if it is somebody who is good, who is in your good books, even if you don't have, or even if it is meant for something, you can release it. So that righteousness is below the righteousness of everlasting life. What God is saying is that after somebody abuses you and now comes and says, I need 100,000, and the 100,000 in your hand, you will naturally give excuse for it. But the commandment, the righteousness of everlasting life will make you say, take. When you are saying take, you are dying. Every cell in you is, is reacting. Is reacting. When you do that enough, those cells will keep quiet. They will be, when you do it enough, you say, ah, ah. If I, you tell somebody who was supposed to be a Christian that this is what this person did to me yesterday and the next day is coming and say, I need this. Say, ah, Kilonjebe, don't try that. That is legalizing lawlessness. You do it again. It's taking you for granted. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. I want to live your life. You can measure unto me. We are not singing it again. <laughs> Is that a song? Larry, God bless you. God bless you, brother Larry. The Spirit of God song, sang that song to me as I was waking up this morning. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. I'm <laughs> measure it. Measurement. It's a measurement. Measurement. They measure it. Because they want to give us everlasting life. Is that what, not what we said this year? God wants to give to us everlasting life. So to give us everlasting life, they must measure. Hey, because thou will quicken me by your commandments. For your commandments are life everlasting. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. I want to live your life. Measure unto me your commandments of everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bakavi no coste fali, inguni ash tafateni, o guinea stafoli, a fan de foli, a fali ke foli, a minoto foli, a light to foli, a magi to foli, foli, a sin at a foli, is like a foli. It's like a folly. It's like a folly. It's like a foolish thing. 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 For you remember, 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 the foolishness of God is wiser than man. 
This is my foolishness. This is my foolishness. This is my foolishness. This is my foolishness. It is the part of life. It looks foolish because the world by wisdom knew not God. These are the things that the world cause told that makes the world not to know God. Not to know God. Not to know God. But you see, you are coming to know God. You are coming to know God and you are seeing the foolishness of God. You are seeing the weakness of God. This is the weakness of God that is stronger than the strength of man. This is the weakness of God. This is the weakness of the cross that overcame and destroyed him. Learn the secret and you will end We are the firstborn ended see the spirit of god no time Thank you, Lord Jesus. Panika te fori ana shata fao. E noto run ta kapa so run, run, run. Soli has to so run. Your soul have to run. So where you are not expected to slow down in obedience, you have to run with this commandment. You have to run with this commandment. Don't check it. Don't let your mind, even your carnal mind, think through it. It is time to run. It is time to run. For I'm giving you energy to run. For when you do this commandment, indeed you are running. You are running. You are running. You are running. So that death should not catch up with you. So that death will not catch up with you. For you see, Borean Savico Parandestia, Beriga Death. Omitaka the dead is on another dead is on the dead 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 for this commandment is framed in such a way that it is it is easy for your mind to let them go it can slip off your hand if you don't run with it it you can it can slip off your hand and you will even know that it's slipping up but you won't be able to do anything because you refuse to run you have to run no you have to run it is time to run it is time to quicken your pace. It is time to run. It is time to run. It is time to run. So that this great salvation, this so great salvation will not slip off your hand. Run and run and run and run and you will live. See the spirit of God. Hey, this is mercy. Mercy is visiting also. Abi, you don't understand me. Abi, am I the only one that is thinking like this? This is mercy. This is mercy. This is mercy. Visitation of mercy. Ah.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Safi suze veten ashe borota fene topelite siata bankete vedo toliete ron, 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 ron. For it's time to lay aside. It's time to lay aside. It's time to lay aside. Lay aside weights. Lay aside weights. Lay aside Lay aside words. Lay aside words. Lay aside those things that easily beset you. Lay them aside and run. 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 For it's almost time to take flight. Run. 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 For many are saying it's this going to be possible for me to do for this thing is so deep and this art is so painful oh I bring grace oh I bring grace oh I bring grace I bring grace to you in this season I bring grace I bring grace I bring grace I bring might where you are weak I bring might where you are weak I bring strength in your weakness for I want to perfect my strength even in your weakness I bring strength strength for you to obey my commandment. For you see, you would not look like me if you don't obey my commandment. You would not look like me if you don't obey my commandment. For many will be ashamed at my appearing because they don't look like me. You can only look like me when you obey the laws that I keep. For what friend me up is the laws that I keep. I am bringing my laws to you in this season. Yeah, it is difficult for man to obey. Yeah, it is difficult for flesh to carry out. Yeah, it is difficult, but I am bringing grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Oh, it is the days of my power. It is the days of my power. All you need to do is just agree with that which I am saying, and you will begin to see how easy my commandment is. How easy my commandment is, for they are not grievous. They are not grievous, but they are commandment agenda, even on to life everlasting. Obey it. Obey it and run. Obey it and run. For the devil, even the adversary, your enemy, is coming down upon the earth with great wrath. He's coming down. He's coming down. He's coming down. Therefore run. Therefore run. Don't let him catch you upon the face of the earth. Don't let him catch you in the place of the heart. Don't let him catch you in the place of the self-justification. Run out of the earth. Run and take flight. Run and take flight and become heavenly. I bring grace. I bring grace. I bring grace. <laughs> Say the spirit of God. Oh my God. Become heavenly. Become heavenly. By running. Become heavenly. When you don't do, you don't become. When you don't obey, configurations are not broken. Formations are not broken. When you don't obey, you need to obey. We need to obey. We, we, we. This prophecy reminds me of a dream I had last week. You know, Satan does not leave you alone. After God has raised, raised standards, and you say, Lord, I agree. Lord, I believe. I'm ready to do. The devil comes to want to take over your thoughts realm with thoughts that contradict the standard God has raised. So I was going to sleep and those thoughts came. I was struggling with them. I realized that I needed to pray more to ward away those thoughts. But I slept well that was running, but the running was not swift. Because I was entertaining those. And those thoughts, they were ordinarily, I would not want those thoughts. But they were in positions. And they will force you to take it. Eh? Supervised by people say, oh Lord, you are going nowhere. What take out this thought? Think this one. I say, I don't want, that's why we need to pray more. We need to give ourselves to prayers. You see, prayers... When you pray from your... Because what I now did to ward it off was to spend time speaking in tongues. As I was speaking in tongues, I was, the, this thing was loosening its strength. Satan doesn't want us to run. He will bring every... When you say, lay aside every weight, 
those words can be wrong thoughts. Because that was exactly what happened to me. Thoughts. Wait. I just saw my soul was running, but the running was not swift. I was disturbed. I killed him of a sudden now. I want to run now. But thoughts have been laid. So one thing we are going to do, we are going to be prayerful. Along with hearing. You make up my I've made up my mind to obey those commandments. But the devil just came. So you discover that it's not just about you. There's something that wants to stop you. There, there are spirits, spirits against everlasting life. They are desperate and wicked. Very desperate. They are they're them that hate us. They want to prevent you from life. Ah, Mufaisare. And you brought thoughts to stop me from running. And the Lord showed me. He said, see what is happening. The running was not sweet. In my heart, I desired to run fast. I desired to run fast. The Lord is telling us to run so that death will not catch up with us. Because what we are hearing is to make us escape. Escape. The escape route is to run. Is to, how do you run? Obey commandments. Have everlasting life. As they are measuring down to us, if you, if you say, don't say in your heart, I cannot, because grace will come with the hearing. When you see him, you are seeing him who is full of grace and truth. You are not just seeing truth, you are seeing grace also. Grace will come, because at the more you see the Lord, I see how beautiful it is. I, I, I desire him. I desire you. So, you know the way you desire, like, that they should just open your mouth and they will just pour everlasting life, the nature of Christ, and you just appear beautiful one day. That's the way I desire it. Wait one long. I want this thing that is inside you. I want it. My arrangement is not good. Eh, Pastor Tokwe? I should be able to see Bolly in the, this thing. And I say, ah, ah, talo shelei. <laughs> My arrangement is not good enough. I want that beautiful man. I want the laws that made him up. He's so beautiful. He's fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into his lips. I want to look like him. I want to be like him. I want the laws that configured him to configure me. Laws of kindness. Laws of mercy. Laws of patience goodness, long-suffering. I want those laws. And it is possible. He said he wants to give us. That is why he's showing us. So we are going to be seeing the sun. Revelation of the sun will be coming to us from different ministers, from different angles. I've just brought my own angle. Other ministers will come and bring their angle. There's a way we all see the Lord. Have you noticed that? We see a part of him. You see a part of him. You see a part of him. I see a part of him. Everything comes together. It becomes whole. Other ministers over the, throughout the year will be showing us the sun. What made up the sun? What configured the The laws, the Lord will reveal it to you. He will reveal it to you by instruction, by correction, by understanding. You can just like this, uh, uh, jo, I mean, Matthew that I shared yesterday. I've been reading it, but last week, after Pastor Tyre ministered at uh, Revelation Hour, the thing just, I just, it just popped up. I said, ah, ah, kilele. Then I went back home and read it. It made a different, it became a commandment afresh. It came alive to me. It made so much sense. I now saw, ah, ah, this is the instruction of perfection. Anybody who is perfect should be able to operate like this. This is a perfect man, Abi. Said that you may be far perfect, even as your heavenly. I say, ah, ah, law of command, com perfection, lele, law of perfection, eh, ha, 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 ha. That's how I saw it. And when you have seen it like that, I thank God yesterday, the Lord said, This is the standard He has raised for us, that this is His expectation. All of us must come to this place where you will pray for those that curse you. You bless, they curse you, you bless. They despitefully use you. You bless. You pray. You do good to them that hate you. 
that hate you, that hate you. You are no longer a human being. You are, you are crossing the boundary of death. You are entering into life. <laughs> Do good to them that hate you. You are leaving death behind. You are defeating death. Oh, Paiku. You are nullifying death. You rise up and do good. Rise up and do good. You are flying below the radar of Satan. Below the radar of death. Satan will tell you like, yeah, he walk. How can that person does not deserve it? He say, eh, says who? Says he did this, he did that, he did this. Does not deserve this, your daddy. Do me, I do you. God no vex. God they vex you. God they vex you. You do me evil, I do you good. God is happy. It's a tall order. But God wants to give us everlasting life. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Because these things, for it to be coming, some people must enter this. It is important that some people must enter. I will be among the people that we enter. Oh, I don't know about you. Some must enter. I want to be among those who will enter. I want to be able to run swiftly. I want to run faster. Grace to be swift, to run well, to run better, to run faster. Pray. <laughs> you know the understanding of everlasting life. We defeat things. Things that stop us from running. They will no longer mean anything to us. Things that we hold highly. In high esteem. That is slowing down your journey. When you see the sun. Those things will lose their, they, they will lose their grip. They will no longer be important. They will mean nothing to you again. Some must enter. I will be among them that enter. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I just remembered yesterday, I said, when my husband decided to change his uh, return date, if I had stayed on the wrong side of the divide, will I be able to stand this morning and minister? Eh? If I'm still right, I'm still right, I'm still right, I will slow my journey. There is nothing the devil can present to you that can make you that can be valuable enough for you to slow your journey. What God will be showing us as he's showing us everlasting commandments, what, will be, what you will be seeing when you are seeing everlasting life, you will be seeing that other things don't mean anything. They don't, nothing matters like life. Nothing, you must not die because of anything that is corruptible. You must not die because not to obey everlasting commandment because of the corruptible is to die. Eh? Tell yourself, I will not die. I will not die. Not to die means to obey everlasting commandments. And not the devil, what the devil presents to you to die. <laughs> Strong reasons to die are the corruptible. Corruptible. Things that are corruptible and they will look so real as if your life depends on it and then you see a reason to cooperate with satan to die see this thing is so important to me it means so much to me my name is at stake my reputation is at stake my honor is at stake everything i live for every dream my dream is at stake your dream is corruptible take me to the place where I will not have a say. Then my mouth will be like this. Like uh, one woman of God was telling me that before, when the husband talks once, she will talk ten. So now when the husband is talking, because God has instructed her, as she wants to talk, she will hold her lips. Mm, mm, mm. She will use her two hands to hold her lips. Mm, 
She wants life. It's Mommy Daniel. Yes. Then she will lose her two hands like this. Mm. Until she swallows the, the thing she wants to say. Because she wants to live. May your two hands be active this year to hold your, your lips. So that life does not slip out of your mouth. Strong reasons to die. May God give you enough sense to, not, to see that reason. That the reason for this reason is so that I can die. The, Satan, the devil does not serve all the things that be of God. He serves only the things that be of man. He will not come and encourage you to live. Oh. He will only encourage you to die. You will be wise to escape death in the name of Jesus. When those motions, because those motions are inside us. When those motions wants to rise, you say, you don't look back. Understanding will make you press the motion and say, you don't look back. When he manages to escape, you bring it back and say, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me for this yielding to this motion. It's a warfare. But some must enter. I don't want them to be counting people who have entered and I'm not a monk. The Lord will help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Amen.